I have an Altos cable, loose tube type. That means it has 250 micron coated fiber. And to remove the sheath on a middle section like this, um, I got a couple of tools here. I have some cut resistant gloves, ANSI certified eyeglasses, uh, safety glasses, and that's all I need to stay safe. For this particular cable, 96 fiber altos, um, observe a minimum bend radius of 7.2 inches and a maximum pulling tension of 600 pounds, and you will be okay. When working with sheaves, blocks, shoes, and other installation equipment, make sure that they meet the minimum bend radius of the cable at all times. Failure to do that may lead to broken fibers um, or other damage that you'll find when you go to test the cable. Make sure that your cable does not ride on the edges of a manhole or a handhole, and all the equipment that you use is certified for fiber installation. For optimal sheath removal length, um, consult the SRP, or standard recommended procedures of manuals that may be provided with the closure or housing into which you're installing the cable. For this SCF 6C28 closure, I need to take about 118 inches of sheath off the central part of the cable. To remove the sheath on this uh, section of cable, locate the center point and make a mark using a permanent marker or some tape. Use your hook blade or rotary cable stripper to make a ring cut at that point. And you just want to score the jacket, you're not cutting it, and at a point 10 inches away from that. Make another ring cut. Flex the cable at those two points. Once you can see the water blocking tape on the inside, get a hold of your hook blade, insert it, and hook the jacket. Hold your arm with the knife still and pull with your other hand. Stop at the other end and remove the jacket. Inspect the cable and look for a switchback. I can see that there is a switchback right there. I was lucky. If not, you would repeat the same process until you got to a switchback. After that, use your tape measure and mark a point 59 inches on either side, depending on the sheath removal length dictated by the closure you're using. Use your snips to cut the ripcord. And use your hook blade to make a starting notch on either end for the rib cords. Use a handle such as this to wrap around your rib cord or a scrap piece of cable. Remember to stop at the mark that you made previously, which at this point should have a ring cut on it. Cut your rib cord and I always like to live a little bit there just in case I make a mistake. Now separate the jacket from the contents on the inside. Do it on one side and then repeat for the other side. When you get to the end, just separate the sheath from the rest of the cable. Now what we want to do is remove the water blocking tape. There is a binding tape that attaches the water blocking tape to the rest of the cable and I will use a sim ripper. Once you've used your sim ripper to make multiple cuts on the binding tape, use your scissors or snips and cut the water blocking tape. Once the water blocking tape is off, use your sim ripper again to make multiple cuts on the binding tapes. So once that you have all the water blocking and binding tapes off the cable. Separate the buffer tubes from the central strength member by unraveling starting from the central switch back. The switch back looks just like this. This is where the SD stranding switches oscillation from one side to the next. And it makes this 
task very easy. Also, cut off the water blocking yarn that's wrapped around the center strength member. You may have to do that multiple times. Once the buffer tubes and the center strength member are unraveled, then you can use your diagonal cutting pliers to cut the center st strength member. Cut it at a point six, inch f six inches from the end of the jacket and then trim it accordingly later. Do the same on the other end. And your finished product should look something like this. Now this is ready for installation inside the closure. And after you've installed it inside the closure, then you need to split your buffer tubes. And I'm going to be using a buffer tube splitting tool. The way that works is inside the closure, locate the buffer tube that you need to splice to, open the tool, insert the buffer tube on the inside, it's a clamshell design and then close the tool. And then you can move it either to the left or to the right to split your buffer tube. As you can see, my buffer tube is split. And then use your snips and simply cut the buffer tubes. And your end product should look something like this. If you have any questions, give us a call or send us an email. And remember, we recommend taking a training class in fiber optic installation. Thank you.